Welcome viewers to our Elimu Live. Uh, wherever you are, I want to welcome you all to enjoy our today's lesson in social studies. My name is Teacher Chris Mondi. I'll be taking you through uh, different parts and uh, I hope you are going to enjoy wherever you are and stay connected and stay tuned. Now, first I want to say that I'll have to discuss uh, this topic called uh, Scramble and Partition. That's the topic we are going to discuss today. And I hope if you have uh, a pen for those who are in class 8 and hoping to do the exam this year or uh, probably early next year, we we are going to discuss, and of course, if there is any question pertaining that part, you can as well bring it so we discuss together. So I hope the number is going to appear on your screen. So if there is any question pertaining this topic, you are free to bring it on as we discuss. So the first, I'll discuss about the scramble for and partition of Africa. That is a very uh, normal topic that we all know among the topic in our syllabus and of course I'll take you through every bit of this uh, topic and uh, we are going to enjoy all of us so the first I'll define what scramble is the word scramble as you see on your screen it talks about the struggle and compete in a disorderly manner I repeat the word scramble, it means struggle or compete in a disorderly manner. That is what you mean by the word struggle, scramble. Then partition, it means to compete for. The word partition means to compete for. Let me go and show you. The word partition, it is there. It is there on top. If you check, you are going to see that partition is to divide up Africa into smaller parts. When you divide Africa into smaller parts, it means to partition. Then, I have tried to partition one of my orange, and of course, I have divided that orange into two portions, the first part and the second part. So, of course, you are now going to understand that the word partition, just in simple terms, it means to divide. You can divide the portion of your garden into smaller portion, or you can divide whatever you have into smaller portion. That is what you mean by the word partition. Now, I've also tried to divide it further. I've divided it further. You can see there. I've taken an orange and try to divide it into smaller pieces. That is how Africa was divided. That is how Africa was divided. So the first thing you are supposed to know or to understand that the partition and scramble of Africa, it began all the way from the year 19th century. So Africa was under the British colony by the year 1919. So most of the African countries were colonized by different European powers. So the first one that I want you to understand that in a total of 55 countries that we have in Africa, we have a total of 55 countries in Africa, most of them were colonized by uh, France. Most of them were the French colonies. So meaning that the French took the largest portion of Africa and especially in the West Africa and some part of islands. So, check European nation that took part in the scramble for Africa. One, we have the Britain. Two, we have the Belgium. Three, we have the France. And I said earlier that France took many colonies. Then we have the Germany, we have the Portugal, we have the Italy, and we have the Spain. So those are the some of the countries, European nation, that took part in the scramble and partition. Then, reason for the scramble for colonies in Africa. 
I earlier on said that African countries, they mostly attracted the European nation mainly because of one reason. And that one reason, it's because the European nation wanted to acquire raw material for their industries. So that is one of the main reasons why most of the European nation was attracted to African countries. So most of the African countries were colonized, apart from the few that were not. So one of them that was not colonized is called Liberia, and another one is called another one is called Ethiopia. So those two countries are the only countries in Africa that was not colonized by any European power. Ethiopia was not colonized. Why? Ethiopia was not colonized because of the strong leader called Menelik II, which fought the Italians in the Battle of Adoa, and they were defeated terribly. Then we have also Liberia, which was not colonized. It was a place or it was a home of free slave that most of the items which were being used by the these European countries, they were places which were taken, the armories and all that. Then the slave trade, the, the slaves were also kept there. So that is why Liberia was not colonized. Then Ethiopia was not colonized. Why? Because of a strong leader called the Menelik II, which fought the Battle of Adoa and which European nation was defeat, defeated, the Italians. That is the summary of what you are going to discuss in details. So reasons for the scramble for colonies in Africa. I hope you can be able to see on your screen. The first reasons, I said, we have the first reason for the scramble. The first reason for the scramble and partition of Africa. It is what you call the European wanted raw materials. The one that I have ticked. Number two, number two. We have European wanted to establish market for their goods. That is number two. Number three, European wanted areas to invest their surplus capital. Surplus capital. Some of the European nations were well-established countries and were well-established nations. So what do they do? They wanted a place where they can invest their capital or their resources. And they find out that the only place where they can invest their resources is this place called Africa. This black nation, the black country called Africa. Then number four, for the prestige. Some just wanted to show their power, to show their uh, the armory, the arsenals, how well they are. And that is another reason why they get uh, African was colonized. Then another reason for the Strategic reasons, which meant to protect the source and the cause of River Nile. River Nile, it stretches, maybe shortly let me describe about River Nile. River Nile stretches all the way from Egypt and it goes into different countries. One of the countries that River Nile stretches into is what you call Egypt. Another one is Kenya. Another one is Uganda. And it goes into Sudan and it stretches all the way to Ethiopia. So that is some of the countries where River Nile stretches. And in most cases, I do tell my learners that River Nile, where River Nile stretches, are the countries which are colonized by British. Because when the British colonized Egypt, it was one of the strategic reasons. He wanted to acquire or to occupy the source of River Nile. And that is why Uganda was colonized and also Kenya was colonized. Because Lake Victoria and uh, Lake Victoria, which stretches into Uganda and some part into Kenya, it, it, it is the main source of River Nile. And that is why Uganda was colonized, simply because it wanted to occupy and take control of the source of River Nile. Then, another one, it is for the prestige and reasons meant to protect the source of River Nile, which I've said, this one, I've said that. We also have to end the slave trade, which we have some of the European nation. They were coming into Africa just to end the slave trade. Then to spread Christianity, it was one of the reasons to spread Christianity. 
It was also to settle the surplus population. Settle the surplus population. Those are some of the reasons why the Africa were colonized. Then, we want to go and classify or categorize them into different groups. So we have different groups and we have different categories why African was colonized. So the first one, the first one, I want to tell you that economic reason, economic reason, maybe if you are there, you can classify all the reasons into different categories. So one, we have economic reason, economic reason, economic reason is one of the the categories why Africa was colonized. So under economic reasons, we have the European wanted raw materials, that is raw materials and establish market for their goods. Those are the two economic reasons. So the next one, the next one, the next one we have the strategic reason, have the strategic reason, have the strategic reason as one of the European nation maybe let me write here the strategic reason uh, here on top strategic reason <coughs> sorry just a minute strategic reason strategic reason so we have two economic reason strategic reasons we have political reasons and we have what you call the social reasons so there is the main reasons why i'm writing this the strategic reasons i've said it is because european nation had colonized two countries and one of the main countries for the strategic reason is what you call the uganda uganda and Egypt was mainly colonized because of the strategic reason. Why? Because it wanted to control the whole of the whole of River Nile. That is some of the things that you are supposed to take note of. Then I have outlined here, I've outlined here reasons why African was colonized. One is economic reason, and economic reasons have uh, said two, search for raw materials. That is one. Two, search for industries search for industries and some of the industry raw materials is there have just come up with something which you can be able to know so this one so this one let us assume that this is the gold some of the african countries were very rich in gold which one of the countries that were very rich in gold one of them is south africa south africa currently is the leading producer of gold and that is why the european nation was attracted because we had rich in resources maybe i can discuss further on that part so most of the african countries were very rich in resources some of the resources were natural and those resources i've talked about the raw materials and i've uh, tried to portray it on your screen so that you can see the appearance and the color of the gold so south africa currently is the leading producer of gold and uh, one of the reasons why European nation acquired colony is because of the raw materials. We have countries like Nigeria produce petrol, and that is why maybe they are being the European nation was attracted here. So another country, it is what you call the Zambia. Zambia is also hard rich in mineral Congo forest, very natural forest, and mostly are hardwoods. So those are the things that get. European nation was attracted to and of course if you get down you are going to realize that that one is the unique reason and the main reasons why most of the African country uh, nation most of the uh, European nation was attracted into Africa then I want to proceed on and give you another reason so political reason it was also one of the reasons why European 
had colonies. King Leopold II of Belgium took DRC as his own territory. So this one was an agreement that took place all the way from the year 1884. 18, sorry, 1884. That was the year in the year 1884. 1884 to 1885, the year 1885. So between 1884 and 1885, there is what you call a conference that was chaired by Otto von Bismarck. And that conference was held in Germany, the Otto von Bismarck. Otto von Bismarck chaired a, a conference which wanted to bring all the European nation together so that they can... Uh, prevent or they can avoid the wrongholes that was going on. So that is one of the main reasons why King Leopold II of Belgium took DRC Congo as his main territory because it was also one of the uh, amendments or one of the things that was decided by, uh, by then in that conference. So we have, we have also another one. We have another one which is called, you can see there, I've uh, tried to portray on your screen, you can see King Leopold II of uh, Belgium, King Leo, holding maybe a leader, an African leader, which means that they had, when he, he came here, he find some of the African leaders already in position, some of them were the elders, others were just uh, the local uh, uh, leaders within the, the village or the small units of administration, and you can see a photo. And of course, the, our, a diverse culture of the house. You can check that one. Then we also have another part, which is their social reasons, as a, the reason also that made the European nation to had colonies. That's under social reasons, you have the stop slave trade, spread Christianity, and settle surplus population. So those are the things we need to uh, get hold of that reasons are categorized into four the political reasons strategic reasons economic reasons and social reasons social reasons is one to step uh, stop slave trade two to spread christianity then three to settle surplus population so all those ones are the some of the social reasons why european nation acquired colonies in Africa. So, that one is just a photo of a, a missionary. The, some of the missionaries were John Rebman, Ludwin Kraft, which built the, the mission station at Rabai in 18, 1844. Of course, if you go to Rabai in Mombasa, you're going to find a mission station. And those are some of the missionaries that uh, were attracted to Africa and uh, the main reasons why they came here it was social to stop slave trade to spread Christianity and uh, and also and also to settle surplus population then strategic reasons had explained that why British colonized especially Egypt and Somali because when I talk about Somali maybe let me sketch here the map of Africa. Let me sketch here the map of Africa. Let me sketch here the map of Africa. In uh, so, if you check that, if you check that one, you are going to find that this is the Red Sea. This is the Red Sea. Then we have River Nile, which stretches all the way from the Mediterranean. Then it goes all the way to here. So this one is Lake, uh, Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria is around this part. Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria is around this part. Then we have this, the branches that which are called the, uh, the, some of the branches which are called the tributaries. And then it forms delta here. Nile has a delta. Then you have the tributaries. Then this Nile, as it stretches all the way from uh, Lake Victoria going to Uganda and Kenya, it was influenced by the British and also Somali. Somali is here. Somali is the country or is the only country in Africa that has the longest coastline, followed by South Africa. 
So South Africa is this. This is the coastline of South Africa. is one of the longest. And Somali, this is the coastline. So this Somali, Somali, Somali is a country and Somalia are the people. So the Somalia are the people and Somali is the country. So this Somali class, of course, where you are watching me, you can be able to see. Then we have this Somali that was colonized by three co European powers. I mostly advise my learners to write the word FBI. What does it mean? Maybe to explain this. When a European nation came to Africa, they find that a lot of resources were there. Then different European countries was running at different position. So there were different reasons why they were running to that particular place. So you'll find that Somali attracted so many European nations, one of them being France. France. Another one is uh, Britain. Then another one is Italy. So the one that has the largest portion is called the Italy. Why? Italy had the largest portion because of its influence in, the, in that uh, territory. It has the largest portion compared to uh, France and compared to Britain. Then some other countries that took the largest portion, some other nation that took the largest portion is what you call the France. France mostly had the influence in West Africa and islands. The islands on the eastern side was all in, uh, taken by France, starting from all the way to Seychelles, going to Comoros, going to Madagascar, all the way to Mauritius. All these ones were taken by what? Were taken by France. So these, these islands, one, two, three, four, and Madagascar is the largest island, was purely occupied, was purely occupied by France. So the France has almost a total of 21 countries in Africa. And all those countries in Africa, the majority are found, the majority are found in West, the majority are found in West Africa. The majority of them are found in West Africa. So let me clean this part. So the, 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 another thing that you are, you need to take note of, that once the European nation declares the sphere of influence in a specific country in Africa, no any other country is supposed to have the, the influence there, or no any European nation is supposed to acquire it and settle there. So that is one of the things or recommendation that was passed out in 1884 in the Berlin Conference. So we proceed on, and that is the Mediterranean Sea, and you can see the Egypt and River Nile going downwards, and of course you have seen Sudan there, uh, the White Nile, of course extending into Bar El Gazelle as a tributary, going to the Blue Nile in Ethiopia, extending all the way to uh, Kenya and Uganda. So that one was under the influence of British. British occupied the largest portion of Egypt and also any source of River Nile and it is coarse. So that one is Otto von Bismarck. I, can, uh, I just want you to understand also it's good Learning is very diverse. When you're learning, you don't need only to learn about the words. You also need to understand the spellings, understand the pictures, and also understand the meaning of words. So I have tried to come up with a, a picture of Otto von Bismarck. That is one of the person who chaired the Berlin Conference of the year 1884. It was held in the year 1884. The year, sorry. 18, I said earlier, in the year 18, 1884, all the way to 1885. 
So that one, I hope you can be able to see. That's the time the Berlin conference was held. And who chaired that Berlin conference? It was the person called the Otto von Bismarck. Agreement during the Berlin conference of 1884 to 1885. The European power agreed to divide Africa. That is one. You can be able to see on your screen. Two, that the following guidelines were supposed to be followed. One, they recognized Leopold II of Belgium, King Leopold II of Belgium, as the leader of the Congo Free States, and that is a political reason. Then, River Niger, Zambezi, could be used by any trader just for navigation or for any activity. That is River Niger in West Africa and River Zambezi in the southern part of Africa, which is found in between the two countries, that is Zambia and Zimbabwe. Then areas not occupied could be claimed by any European power. If there is any place in Africa that was not occupied, then that is the only place where any European nation should declare the sphere of influence. Then European to establish the effective administration in their sphere of influence in the countries where they have interest. Areas where European power had laid claims were recognized as the sphere of influence of that power. Then any future differences between the European nation would be settled through negotiation and agreement. There is no any war that was supposed to be taken or there is no any disagreement that was supposed to be uh, that supposed to be uh, engaged in in all those european powers after this agreement because this one was to submit a document that tries to bring the a memorandum of understanding the agreement on how they are going to acquire colonies and in a peaceful way so African continent was under the European control by the year 1910, except Liberia and Ethiopia, which, which was not colonized. So those are the only two European countries or nation that was not colonized. Then we want to move on to the next part, st starting with the British. British had colonies. And one of them is Kenya. Why Kenya? Because I say that is a source of River Nile. Uganda. Why Uganda? Is also a source of River Nile. South Africa and of course the Britain was interested mainly because of the minerals. South Africa was also a colony. Swaziland is a country which is which is uh, ruled by a king. Swaziland is ruled by a king. Sorry. Swaziland is ruled by a king. Swaziland is ruled by a king. We have Zambia. We have another country which is called Zimbabwe. We have a country called Botswana and Malawi. We have a country called Sierra Leone. And we have Sudan together with the Nigeria. So those are the countries which were colonized by Britain. We have also Ghana and Gambia. Those are called the British colonies. They are called the British colonies. So the British colonies, uh, we have a total of 11. We have others like South Sudan. South Sudan just have got independence the other year, but it was not colonized by British, but it has get a portion uh, which arise from the disagreement from the original Sudan. And of course, as we speak now, it has its own president and it has its own constitution. It's being governed by its own mandate and all things are running under the leadership of their own. So Gambia, Ghana, we have Nigeria, Sudan, Sierra Leone, we have Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Swaziland, South Africa, Uganda, and Kenya, all those ones. So I mostly advise my learners to come up with the amicable solution of their problems. For example, we have others who cannot even be able to identify the British colonies. So the British colonies are 
a total of 12 and we have others which you can add on if you go on and investigate further so the first thing it is to sit down and analyze how best can you be able to master or to understand the british colonies the british colony it comes from one most of the countries that had that was rich in minerals was colonized by british then two all african countries that was under the coast of river nile was colonized by the british then how do you be able to understand this maybe i can give you mine and you can also go on and form yours you can say kenya uganda south africa swaziland zambia zimbabwe Botswana, malawi sierra leone sudan nigeria ghana and gambia so i mostly advise the learner if they cannot be able to understand better they can come up with a song they can come up with the acronym they can come up with the mnemonics it's very diverse method of uh, understanding some concept here but the best one is just to understand it the way it is but those ones can only come if you want to add any other additional if you cannot understand better so uh, you can say kenya uganda south africa swaziland zambia zimbabwe botswana na malawi Sierra Leone, Sudan, Nigeria, and Gambia. British. Those are the British colonies. <coughs> Sorry. So those British colonies was purely under the influence of Britain. Was purely under the influence of Britain. So let us move to another part. So that one I've just tried to bring into your attention about about the about the african country and that african country had it is own formation you can say the the one which is uh, of course uh, dotted they were on on the western side were purely colonized by French, the one with the red one was colonized by British, and of course Madagascar, I said Seychelles, I said Mauritius, I also said the all the islands that are found on the western side was purely colonized by, by France. Then we have a total of 55 countries, if I just repeat this, we have a total of 55 countries, all those 55 countries there are six country six countries which is called the island and you have a total of 49 countries which are called the mainland the mainland so the six islands and the 49 mainland they form a total of 55 countries in africa so six islands we have four on the western side on the eastern side and those four on the eastern side were purely colonized by france then we have Another one, two, that's Sao Tome and Principe, Cape Verde. Cape Verde and Sao Tome and Principe. That one are the two islands that were, was colonized by Portugal. So you can say the Portuguese islands on the west and the France islands on the east. So there are four on the east and there are two on the west so those are the things to take note of then i said earlier also that uh, somali was colonized by three european nation or european powers that is fbi that is france british and italy you write the word fbi and of course you are going to understand better the one that had more colonies the, the one that had occupied the largest portion is italy then we also have other countries drc congo was under the influence of belgium drc congo was under the influence of belgium so belgium is the european nation that has few colonies the only colonies that we had in belgium is one and that one is what we call drc congo so we have the spain 
Spain, we have a hint. I've given you a hint there. So Spain colonies, you can write the word Western. Western Sahara and Morocco. So those are the two, two countries in Africa that was under the influence of Spain. So Spain colonized Western Sahara in the West Africa and also Morocco, which is also found in the northern part of Africa. So we have Italy as a colony. Italy as a, a European nation had colonies in Africa. One, Libya, Somali, and Eritrea. So a hint, you can write the word Leso. The one that is this one, Leso. What does it mean? Leso means Libya. L stands for Libya. E stands for Eritrea. And then SO stands for Somali. So just, just that, that is how maybe ways in which we can master these once and for all, especially to those who are hoping to do the exam in the next few months. So we also have Germany, Germany colonies. Germany colonies, we have, uh, I've come up with a, 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 a mnemonic uh, that is Tokanaborwata. The, the word is Tokanaborwata. What does it mean? It means the first T-O, the first T-O, this one, means Togo, Togo. Then we have Cameroon, C, A. Then we have N-A, Nam Namibia. We have Burundi, B-U. We have Rwanda. Then we have Tanganyika. So those are the sum of the, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have, there are seven. So we have Togo, Cameroon, Namibia, Burundi, Rwanda, and Tanganyika. So the next, we have what you call Portugal colonies. The Portugal colonies, you, lands that I, I talked about. The four islands are found on the eastern part, and we have no the, the 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 you can talk about the two islands that I talked about earlier. The two islands are found on the western side, western side. That is Sao Tome and Principe, then Cape Verde. Guinea, it's not an island. Then Guinea Bissau is not also an island. So we have Sao Tome and Principe, Cape Verde, Guinea Bissau, Angola, Mozambique, Equatorial Guinea, Portugal. So those are some of the countries that was colonized by Portugal. Then we have the countries which are not colonized. It is, there are two, Ethiopia and Liberia. I talked about earlier and I stressed on that Ethiopia was not colonized because of a strong leader called Menelik II, which fought the Battle of Adoa and defeated the Ita and defeated the Italians. Italians were defeated. So that one is something that you are supposed to take note of. Then I said, I talked about Liberia was not colonized. Why? Liberia was mainly not colonized because it was a place of free slaves. Free slaves. Then we have the France colonies, Morocco, Senegal, Burkina Faso, Algeria, Mauritania, we have Mauritius and we have Mauritania. Mauritania is a mainland country and Mauritius is an island country. Somalia, I talked about Somalia, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, Congo, Djibouti and Chad. So we have Seychelles, the Guinea-Bissau, Mauritius, Mali, Gabon, Niger, Comoros, Madagascar as the largest island. Madagascar, this is the largest island class. The largest island. And then lastly, we have Central African Republic. Central African Republic. Then, so let us maybe take you through about the Portugal. How can you be able to master this because i've talked about tokana borwata i've talked about that is the 
colonies under the Germany. We ha I've talked about Wesam. I've talked about the DRC Congo as the only uh, the only country in Africa that was colonized by Belgium. Then I've also talked about the Somali having three colonies, three European powers. That is FDI, France, British, and Italy, whereby Italy occupied the largest portion. And then we also have other countries like Portugal. Then under this Portugal, we have Sao Tome and Principe. You can just sing or come up with a This is just my own. You can as well take it or reform yours. Still, is the best thing. You'll, it is good also to invent and come up with something which you will not forget. But mine maybe you can forget easily. That is Sao Tome and Principe, Cape Verde, Guinea, Bissau, Angola, Mozambique, Ictoro, Guinea, Portugal. Ictoro, Guinea, Portugal. So that is something that you can just, when you are seated, you come up with your own ways in which you can master that very well. Then we have the African during the 19th century. We have the questions under that part. Uh, maybe if I can just give you some of the questions. And of course, in KCP, we had so many questions pertaining that one. And uh, before I give you questions, if you have any question, any worry, any comment, or even a compliment, you can just send to us through our social media. That is the KUTV, the channel, and the, the number is on the screen as it appears there. You can go through the WhatsApp, you can go through the Facebook channel, which we mostly have, or you, you can as well send to us uh, direct through the number that appears on the screen. So any comment, any questions, any query, you are welcomed to we, we discuss further. Then uh, we have questions. We have questions in KCP. These have sampled out. These are the questions which has been a problem to majority of our my learners. And they have said that when you go to KU, try to tackle this topic. And of course, I've tried my best uh, to go through the topic. If you are there and you are following me keenly, at least you have get something. Then these questions, I'll start with the number. European nation established colonies in Africa during the 19th century in order to 2001, question 31. If you have a KCP question, that is 2001. European countries established colonies in Africa during the 19th century in order to promote good relationship with the African leaders, A, B, secure market for manufactured goods from Europe, C, encourage African to grow cash crop, then D, obtain land to settle European refugees. So of course, when you check there, the only economic reasons, which is the main, it is choice boy. And I said, in any question, they ask about the reasons why European had colonies in Africa. You should check or you must check the economic risk unless they specify which one of the following is the strategic reasons why European nation acquired colonies. That one is different. Or which one of the following is the social reason why European nation acquired colonies in Africa. But this one, it is just open. You first go to the one which is the one which is economic and the best answer is choice B, secure market for manufactured goods from Europe. And that is the main, the main one. Then 44, European countries scramble for colonies in Africa. That is question number 44, 2003. You can check that one. You can check that. This is. European countries scramble for colonies in Africa, mainly to, now that one, they are very specific. They want the main reason, the main. That is the key thing that you're supposed to check on, 2003. Obtain raw materials, settle 
their surplus population, spread Christianity, and stop slave trade. So those are the, some of the reasons that uh, were that made European countries to acquire colonies. But which one is the main? The main is choice A. The main is choice A. So choice A is the main reason, that one. Choice A. Then the next question 45, 2006. Which one of the following group of countries was colonized by the British? Which one of the following countries was colonized by the British. The first one have Libya, Egypt, Mozambique, B, Lesotho, Zambia, Sierra Leone, C, Ethiopia, Angola, Benin, then D, Senegal, Chad, and Tunisia. So if you check, my learners, if you check for the viewers, you are going to see that it's a mix of different countries in Africa. But now we want only to specify or to select the British, the one that was colonized by the British. So the one that was colonized by the British, you start with the one that I showed you earlier. Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, Swaziland, Zambia, Zimbabwe. Are you seeing that one? Lesotho. That one. Lesotho was colonized Zambia and Sierra Leone. Of course, choice B is the one that is coming out to be the most conspicuous one. This one. Lesotho, Zambia, and Sierra Leone. Those are the countries that was colonized by British. The correct answer is choice B. For those who sat in that year 2006, then the correct answer was that. Question 45. Which of the following groups of countries in Africa was colonized by the French? 2010. I'm talking about the number 45 because that is the number in that paper. 2010. A. Mali, Namibia, Uganda, Senegal, Madagascar, Mali, Togo, Angola, Zambia, Tanganyika, Cameroon. Of course, this one now is just, we talked about that Uganda has Lake Victoria where the source of River Nile is. That is out. Tanganyika, I gave you the word Tokana Borwata, under the German colonies. Then we have Zambia, Angola, Togo, Zambia. Of course, we talked about the... British colonies, Senegal, Madagascar, and Mali. So Senegal is in West Africa, Mali is in West Africa, and Madagascar is an island in Eastern Africa. So the correct answer is choice boy. So those are the things that you are supposed to take note of, and uh, it is a good thing that you have followed the lesson keenly, and if there is any question pertaining or any questions pertaining the topic that I'm discussing, you are free to bring uh, through your screen or through the, our social media channel. So maybe let me do a recap of what we have discussed before I go to the next part for those who have just uh, opened or tuned in now. Let me do a recap. So I said that, uh, I said first that the word scramble and partition, it, come, it came up all the way in the 19th century. And by the year 1910, all African countries, all African countries had already been, had occupied. So the word scramble, it means to struggle in a disorderly manner. Then the word partition means to divide. Then you divide into smaller portion. You divide into smaller portion. Then I also went further and talked about that most of the European nation had colonies in Africa. 
but we have some which never had colonies. We have the Scotland, they never had colonies. When they talk about Brazil, USA, never had colonies enough. So you must be very keen here that Britain, Belgium, France, Italy, we have Italy, we have Germany, Portugal, Spain. Those are the only European country that had colonies in Africa. And which one had occupied the largest portion of Africa? It is France. And which one had the few? It is Belgium. Had, on col had colonized only DRC Congo, which was given uh, to King Leopold II of Belgium. Reasons, we have also classified these reasons into different. We had... Uh, talked about these reasons into different ones. The economic reasons, of course, the first one, European wanted raw materials. We have talked about the European wanted to establish market. Those are the two under the economic reasons. Those are the only two that was under the economic reasons. So we also go further and talked about these, the they wanted also to have invest surplus population, social, the prestige, and show it's just a way of social. Then the strategic reasons, it's political. The strategic reasons is also one of the strategic. Then when uh, British occupied Uganda and Egypt, it was a strategic reason to end slave trade, to spread Christianity, and settle, settle surplus population. The, all those ones are what you call the social reasons. Then we also have reasons why, and I grouped them, the economic reasons, that is one, the political reasons, that is two, the social reasons, that is three, and, and last, lastly we have the strategic reason. Now, I talked about that Egypt and River Nile and it is cause are all countries that was under the influence of British. The first one, I said Egypt, River Nile passes there, Sudan, River Nile passes there, Uganda, River Nile passes there, and then Kenya, River Nile passes there. So all those ones are the countries which was colonized by British. Then we have the Berlin Conference, which stopped the Ruankols, which stopped the, party, the, the, the uh, disorderly uh, manner of uh, sharing colonies, or the struggle for colonies in Africa was purely stopped by Otto von Bismarck, who acted as the chair in 1884 to 1885. Then uh, the agreement, there are those ones. I talked about the one of the agreement that River Niger and Zambezi was given as a, was allowed or could be used by any traders. Then we talked about Leopold King, the Leopold King of Belgium, who was given Congo as a free state. Then I also talked about that areas where the European power had laid the claims, no any other countries will claim the sphere of influence. The future differences between European nations will be settled through the negotiation and all that, and all that. Then British, Kenya, I showed you the, the best way and I have given you my songs, Kenya, Uganda. That is how you are supposed to come up. You can just find your own. Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, Swaziland, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, na Malawi, Sierra Leone, Sudan, Nigeria, Ghana, Gambia, British. So those are some of the things. I have also talked about the total number of countries in Africa is 55 the island countries are six and the mainland are 49 most of the islands were colonized by france and on the one on the western one on the eastern side one on the western side was colonized by portugal then belgium you just write drc congo spain you write, you write to some then italy of course is less so that's libya and somali then Tokana Borwata is, of course, Germany. Then we have uh, Portugal. 
Sao Tome and Principe, Cape Verde, Guinea Bissau, Angola, Mozambique, Victoria, Guinea, Portugal. Then we have the remaining part is France colonies, which took the largest portion in West Africa. And where the where it succeeded, where the assimilation succeeded was in Senegal and was in four communes. So having said that and going through the questions, I would like to tackle also questions uh, which I've received uh, on my WhatsApp so that we can be able to check. Let me check some of the questions. So there are so many questions coming in. Continue bringing questions as we tackle them. So the questions here, let me check. Let me check the questions on the WhatsApp. Yeah. So one question somebody is asking. Malim, which is the best way or which is, show me the best Somebody is trying to tell me, Malim, which is the best way how I can be able to understand the British colonies? I've uh, talked about that. That the best way how you can understand that one you know better. And you can come up with yours. And I've also talked about my own. I said you just want to highlight the course of river nile that is point one then point two you can come up with acronym or a mnemonic or a song even i talked about mine and i've also showed you mine kenya uganda south africa swaziland zambia zimbabwe lesotho amala sierra leone nigeria you come up with something which you can be able to accomplish you are accomplish your your, your 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 problem then another one another one is a question here uh, let me check there is also another question between british between british and germany which one colonized tanganyika valentine between british and germany which one colonized tanganyika now, I talked about Tokana Borwata. We, we have the Germany and we have the British. Tokana Borwata is Togo, Cameroon. And of course, I just want to specify the last uh, Tokana Borwata, ta, Tanganyika, for Germany colonies. Tokana Borwata. Valentine, thank you for your question. Then another one. What's the difference between the white and the blue Nile? Now, the difference, these are just the names of the tributaries of River Nile. And we talked about that the River Nile has more than two tributaries, but the main, the main one is called the White Nile. But the one that extends into Ethiopia is called the Blue, the Blue Nile. So it is the name given to the tributaries of River, of River Nile. So we have uh, excuse me, I have not understand about the song, British Colonies. Kindly repeat on the Spain Colonies. I am Grace, watching from Embu. When did the First World War start? Okay. There are so many questions coming in, so many questions. Uh, so many questions. I can't tackle them all. I'll have to receive them, and of course, when I come next time, we are going to tackle all the questions that uh, you are trying to bring. Uh, please repeat the British colonies. Please repeat the British colonies. The First World War started in the year 1939 and stopped in the year... The First World War started in the year 1913 to 1919. That is the second one started in the year 1939 to 1945. That is the time the First and the Second World War started. Maybe just a recap on the British colonies, just shortly, a recap on the British colonies for those who are asking uh, on that, that one. So I said 
Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, Swaziland, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana na Malawi, Sierra Leone, Sudan, Nigeria, Ghana, Gambia. British, you just conclude in that man. You can come up with the best one even than mine. I'll beg to stop from there because we are slightly behind the time. Thank you for watching KUTV. Thank you for tuning into Elimu Live. And may God bless you. May God bless those who have tried to bring the questions live, who have tried to bring the questions on the WhatsApp, and who are keeping on asking questions in different platforms. Keep on asking. I'll attend to all your questions. And of course, continue watching Elimu Live in KU TV. May God bless all of you. And stay safe. Stay at home. Bye-bye.